Wake Up Money. Today's Marine Corps is fully integrated, but for decades, the Marine Corps did not admit African Americans. In 1941, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed Executive Order 8802, establishing the Fair Employment Practice Commission. Any discrimination because of race, creed, color, or national origin in all government agencies. In June of 1942, thousands of African American men applied to recruiting offices. Training at Monfort Point, North Carolina, they were known as Monfort Marines until 1949, when President Harry S. Truman eliminated segregated units. 21,609 Marines that trained at Monfort Point have not been forgotten. On 23 November 2011, the President of the today, our Montford Point chapter are Southern California's oldest Montford Point graduates. Master Gunnery Sergeant Retired Oscar Colt, Master Sergeant Retired Edward Marbury, and Master Gunnery Sergeant George Mitchell. Both of you all in the city in 1943 and 1945. In 1998, Harris Island Drum Major Staff Sergeant Vernon Harris Close the music to this next selection, memory of the month of Point Marine. Please enjoy Staff Sergeant Harris's I'll Take the Marine.
to make a long story short, this piece is hard. It's a good thing we have such a talented Marine as they performed the melody shot. selection, Bourbon Street Parade, will feature our drum major, Gunnery Sergeant Michael Flanagan, who recently returned from touring with the Marine Corps All-Star Jazz Band in Chicago, Illinois. Gunnery Sergeant Flanagan was a by-name request and led the trumpet section of the strategic group. Bourbon Street Parade is one of the most popular tunes played in the French Quarter of New Orleans today. The syncopated drum beats and jovial melodies of this tune capture the essence of the Mardi Gras Festival that play, takes place each year on this famous and sometimes infamous Historic Street. Please enjoy our rendition of Bourbon Street Parade. Show them some of the 
Please rise for the invocation given by the Command Chaplain, Commander Pease, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Psalm 82. God presides in the great assembly. He gives judgment among the gods. How long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Defend rather the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. The gods know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods, you are all sons of the Most High, but you will die like mere mortals. You will fall like every other ruler. Rise up, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations are your inheritance. Lord, in the spirit of the Marines and sailors of 1st Marine Division who have gone before us and in whose noble tradition we now stand, give us courage to stand up and be counted, to stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves, to stand up for ourselves, it's needful for us to do so. Let us fear nothing more than we revere you. Let us serve no other God before you. Let us seek no other peace but the peace which is yours. And make us its instruments, opening our eyes and our ears and our minds and our hearts so that we may always know what work of peace you call us to do. Lord, be with us and for us as we seek to serve you and our nation faithfully, to care for those around us, and truly, to make the world a better place for all people. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Amen. Taking their positions for the commanding general, First Marine Division, Major General Bailey, and the Division Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Kopchak. <laughs>
Thank you. Please be seated. This month, in the history of the 1st Marine Division, the President of the United States took pleasure in presenting the Navy Cross to pharmacist mate, third class, Joan Marques. Her service is set forth in the following citation. For extraordinary heroism, as a hospital corpsman in a SAW company attached to 5th Marines, 1st Marine Division, in action against enemy Japanese forces on Peleliu, Low Islands, on 13 October 1944. Although severely wounded in both legs during an action in which his company was subjected to intense, hostile fire, PHM-3 Marques courageously dragged himself over extremely rough and difficult terrain to aid seven of his wounded comrades. And although unable to walk, he treated each of the casualties in turn, remaining with them, and refusing treatment for himself until they were evacuated. His valiant devotion to duty Grave concern for the welfare of others were in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Naval Service. For the President, signed James Forstall, Secretary of the Navy. More recent history of the Blue Diamond Division. Commanding General would also like to recognize Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Shea, who sacrificed his life during Operation Iraqi Freedom. His citation reads as follows. For heroic achievement,
achievement in connection with combat operations against the enemy while serving as a communications officer, Regimental Combat Team 1, 1st Marine Division, 1st Marine Expeditionary Force, from February to September 2004, in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom 2. Major Shea's exceptional leadership and initiative provided reliable and consistent tactical communications to Regimental Combat Team 1, which attributed directly to saving Marines' lives and enabled timely operational reporting, which led to the death or capture of hundreds of insurgents. His leadership and technical expertise orchestrated the engineer, installation, operation, and maintenance of the largest tactical regimental communications network in the history of the Marine Corps. During harrowing military operations in urban terrain, he enabled a commanding officer to command and control the equivalent of eight reinforced infantry battalions maneuvering in an area of operations greater than 5,000 square miles of the El Anbar and Babel provinces of Iraq. He personally ensured that commanding officers command jump posts had continuous communications during dozen systems throughout countless combat engagements. On numerous occasions, when traveling with the commanding officer, his convoy came under direct enemy fire. In each case, his calm leadership ensured the convoy was able to return effective fires, maneuver through ambushes with no personnel casualties or loss of equipment. By his zealous initiative, courageous actions, and exceptional dedication to duty, Major Shea gallantly gave his life for his country and reflects great credit upon himself and upheld the highest traditions of the Marine Corps United States Naval Service. The combat distinguishing device is authorized. Additionally, Commanding General representing Mrs. Amy Shea of the Shadow Box that was handcrafted by a World War II veteran, Mr. Frank DeAngelis, who is no longer with us. He has forwarded an open letter that accompanied the Shadow Box, of which reads, To the family of a fallen Marine, I'm 80 years old and a World War II veteran. I'm just someone who makes shadow boxes for the military. I've completed over 750 thus far. I don't ask or expect anything in return. This is a gift to you, my Elizabeth and I. No words can ever say what is in our hearts for your fallen Marine in this war. Hopefully this will become an irreplaceable treasure to you and your family. It is with honor and affection for them that I do what I do. The time I have left in life, I devote this to this mission I have undertaken for all these Marines. They are truly our heroes. With heartfelt sympathy, Semper Fi, Frank DeAngelis, World War II. Ladies and gentlemen, Please rise for the honors of the Commanding General, First Marine Division, Major General Ronald L. Bailey. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Commanding General of the 1st Marine Division, Major General Ronald L. Bailey. Good morning. Lieutenant General Waldhauser, Lieutenant General Coleman, I saw him here. Fellow General Officers, Commanding Officers, Distinguished Guests, Marine Sailors, family and friends. Welcome to the 1st Marine Division. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for coming out this morning. Nice, warm, sunny California day. <laughs> no in actuality, welcome to the 71st anniversary of the morning color ceremony and 71st anniversary of the birthday of the division. Truly an honor and a pleasure to be able to spend this time with you. I 
and welcome you. Entwined in the history of our great nation, the story legacy of the United States Marine Corps, iron will and discipline have earned us a reputation that's second to none. For 71 of those years, the 1st Marine Division has been at the spirit, pushing forward and doing those things that this nation has asked us to do. Today, I want to take an opportunity to recognize a few individuals and organizations. First, I'd like to start with the band. It's been a band, a Marine band, 1st Marine Division, since World War II. And ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a round of applause because this band is the only band that has a standing invitation to march in the Tournament of Roses. In addition to that, various ensembles and morning color ceremony, they distinguish themselves. But wherever Marines arrive from them, they truly represent that. And as you look at the formations in front of you, the Marines that you see in front of you are symbolic of the 24,000 plus Marines of the 1st Marine Division. They're all over the world ex exercising the mission uh, of this great country and of this Corps. And so I ask uh, that you take a moment to pause and recognize those who are not with us that are forward deployed in Afghanistan, on the Meuse, all around the world. These Marines are the Marines that are at the tip of the sphere and carry on the fine traditions of our Corps and carry on the fine traditions that you've established for us. So let's give these Marines a round of applause. Today and at all times, when you look at our colors, the colors are filled with battle streamers. Those battle streamers are symbolic and recognized campaigns. But I ask that you remember that each one of those battle streamers are battle streamers that recognize Marines, Marines who've given their all and sacrificed to ensure that we as a Corps maintain the strong traditions that we have. Very proud, very proud of those colors and the Marines that carry those colors. And ladies and gentlemen, they're colors of the division, forward and deployed. Please give them a round of applause. We have a very steep history, a fine history. Many of you have seen War Horse. Well, the 1st Marine Division has its own War Horse. And Debbie McCain, would you please stand? If you take a moment and look to the rear, you'll see hoof prints. And it's the history of the 1st Marine Division that Debbie brought to life of Reckless. Reckless was our own War Horse. So we thank you very much for bringing that to us. And I know many uh, from the Korean era rem will remember Reckless. So we have our own war horse. He called, we call her Reckless. Thank you very much for that. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> for all the veterans, Guadalcanal, Peleliu, Okinawa, snow-capped mountains of Korea, Vietnam, Desert Storm, Operation Sea Angel, sea Angel Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom. We thank you very much for allowing us to stand on your shoulders. It's your reputation, it's your warfighting prowess that made us who we are today. So I thank each and every one of you and truly hope that you enjoy your time with us and thank you very much for making this 71st anniversary very special. And I say to you in closing, Semper Fidelis. And as you know, it is not, it's not a temporary term, but a permanent one where always faithful means day in and day out. Thank you very much for making this a very special day, and we'll see you around as you bring to life our history and our customs and traditions. Semper Fi. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the retiring of the colors.
also have served in the 1st Marine Division. The division song, Waltzing Matilda, will now be played. The song originates from Australia, where the division maintained a training base in World War II, prepared for the island campaigns. Over the decades, 1st Division Marines and sailors can march off to war to this historic tune. We ask that those who served in our division stand to be recognized. We respectfully request all those who remain seated and silent one of those absent who gave the ultimate sacrifice, and those present who served with the 1st Marine Division. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's morning color ceremony. There will be a 1st Marine Division Association photo taken commemorating our division's 71st anniversary immediately following the unveiling and plaque dedication located at the memorial wall just in front of the reviewing area of the 11 area parade field located directly across the street. Upon completion of the plaque dedication, we will return directly back to your seated area for the photo to be taken. So, on behalf of Commanding General, the Marine and Sailors of 1st Marine Division, Thank you for sharing this special event with us today. those who are about to, deploy, about to deploy. They come from small towns and cities all over this wonderful land. Many are citizens, some are not yet citizens. As we break bread and give thanks, each has a story to tell about why they joined the Marine Corps. I wish you, my fellow citizens, could hear those conversations. Some are soft-spoken, some are nervous, some swagger, some boast. I'm an Indian by choice, by birth, but an American and a former Marine by choice. By the time we finished dinner, 
I'm so damn proud to be an American. I look at them, America's children, flesh of our flesh, bone of our bone, the few, the proud, the Marines. Now our 3,400 Rotarians in San Diego and Imperial County come from a wide variety of occupations and communities. We are prosperous, we are diverse, we have many religions and many political affiliations, but we all value our freedom. Intellectually, we know that freedom is not free, but it takes a memorial like this to remind us that in every generation, freedom has to be ransomed with blood for us to appreciate it. And just as we cherish the Marines in our homes during the holidays, write to them when they are deployed, send them material when they are at war, so we weep with their families when they are wounded and slain. Our hearts break when we hear about their sweethearts and the children they left behind. We are here today to affirm that it is our honor, our duty, our sacred privilege to do no less. Fellow veterans and Marines, you know that each command, you're there for a very short time, and I'm here for a very short time. Much of what you see here was conceived during the reign or the, the duration of my predecessor, past District Governor Dave Breeding. And it's my honor and privilege to invite him to the podium. David. Thank you, Larry. It is a great, great honor to be here today and to witness and to take part in the dedication of this truly hallowed place. We are grateful and humbled to be in the presence of men and women who risk their very lives to protect our country and the freedoms that we so enjoy. We are also grateful for the men and women who work together diligently to make this place a reality. There are so many to thank. But I want to take a few minutes just to recognize the contributions of the Rotary Clubs and Rotarians who participated financially in the funding of this project. As you may already know, all the funding came from private sources, individuals and organizations. None of it came from government funds. Seven area Rotary Clubs participated in the raising of the funding through their fundraisers, our contributions of their members, our friends. All seven of these clubs are represented here today, and I'd like to recognize and thank them for their generosity. Together, these clubs gathered $52,500 in cash. All the other Rotary Clubs in the San Diego and Imperial County counties uh, co collectively contributed another $12,500 for a total of $65,000. If you're a member of one of these clubs, as I call your club name, I'd like you to stand if you're seated or wave your hand if you're standing and be recognized. The Rotary Club of Vista, last year's president, Tim Aspel. Vista, are you here? The Rotary Club of Escondido Sunrise, uh, last year's president, Peggy Riber. The Rotary Club of Valley Center, Mary Swansby. The Rotary Club of Bonzel, Mark Vasta. The Rotary Club of Carlsbad, Avneet Sidhu. The Rotary Club of Escondido East, Peggy Merkel. That is six of the seven clubs. I want to make some special comments about the seventh club, which is the Rotary Club of Camp Pendleton. Proudly the very first Rotary Club on a military base anywhere in the world. Rotary Club of Camp Pendleton and last year's president, Linda Sundrum, please rise or wave. <laughs> This little but mighty club of just 10 members conceived of and spearheaded this project. 
They dreamed with the base commanders, as you've heard. They wrote the letters, they created the project, and they saw it through every step of the way, including today. Along the way, they had some creative fundraisers, and through those and the generosity of several, uh, including our good friend Steve Brown, who's in the audience today, I think, and Susan Brown. <laughs> Together they raised $31,500, or almost half of the entire money for this project. Many of us remember the Defender Bowl games between the Marines and, and the local police and firefighters. I personally remember being in awe as I stood in the pouring rain one day watching hundreds of people buy tickets at the gate in the rain to see that first game. This club efforts earned them a special recognition from Rotary International as our community project of the year for all of San Diego and Imperial counties for last year. Thank you, Linda, and thank you, the Rotary Club of Camp Pendleton. And thank you all, the 3,400 Rotarians in San Diego and Imperial County. Rotary International's motto is service above self. We strive to live by that motto, but truly our service pales in comparison to the ultimate service and sacrifice of those for whom this place is dedicated. We honor them and we salute all the men and women of the United States military for their service way above self every day as they protect our country and the freedoms that we so enjoy. And now I'd like to bring the spark plug of this project back up to this uh, podium, Linda Sunder. Well, I just want to finish up by thanking some of the people who were responsible for the what you'll get to see in a few moments. A lot of people gave up their time, gave up materials without hesitation. We come out and we do our fundraisers and I will go out into the community and say it's for the Marines. And there's never a hesitation of the giving that people do. They want to help. They know how much it means for you to, and what you sacrifice and your family sacrifice. I come onto this base almost every day and I go into their homes, and I see them at work, and I get the great privilege of getting to hug some of them, and their children, and they are the most precious people that I know. I tell my husband every day that I would adopt all of them if I could. He frowns on that. But I can't, I'm, I've tried and tried to remember of a project or an effort that I felt more proud of than I do today. And there isn't one. This is the greatest honor that I've ever had. And I thank Rotary for allowing me to do it. I want to be professional. <clears throat> First, I'd like to thank Kirk Richardson and Scott Cook. They helped us with the lighting. And then Ryan Meyer and Joseph Parrish and the Wolfpack group who actually did the stonework. And you'll see how what a wonderful job they did. Thank you so much, guys. And then there's Tony Melville. She's one of yours. She works here on the base with facilities. And she has helped me go through this process every step of the way. And she was invaluable. She's a wonderful woman. You're lucky to have her. And there's Gerald, there's Gerald McFarlane and the Sun Country Builders who did the concrete work and the stonework up here to get us ready for them. They were great help. And a very special thanks goes out to Steve and Susan Brown for all their help to make this possible. Thank you so much. And Steve Field, last but not least, Steve Fielding, who actually did the electrical work, so that if you come by at night, you can see the lighting, that you, so you can come and see a piece of the evening. So 
So it's been a while, it's been a long time, but it's finally here. I just want to apologize that it's not totally complete. As you'll see there's two stone walls sitting here in front. They will be finished quickly. They will represent the two areas that Iraq and Afghanistan, where these young people gave the ultimate sacrifice and so did their families. I think this is the greatest gift that we can give them to remember them so that Colonel Morano can keep that promise to that mother and all the other mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and children who are affected by this wall. I don't know about you, but there are too many names on the wall. But we will we'll never forget, never. But without further ado, General Holthauser, this is our gift to you. Good morning, everyone. It's glad uh, and I think only appropriate uh, and fitting that the sun here starts to shine as we get close to unveiling the wall uh, behind us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, fellow veterans, and especially the fellow veterans of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and their families who are here in attendance with us today. It is a tremendous honor for me to stand before you this morning as we come together to remember our fallen comrades in our 11th year at war and at an important period of our lives and in the history of this nation. I would like to first say a grand thank you to those who are responsible for this memorial, for those who conceived, designed, built, and helped make this wall a reality for us today. Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton, led by Colonel Nick Morano, worked tirelessly to provide the location, the contracting, and manpower to place this memorial behind us. Linda, Larry, and David and their leadership, and as you've heard this morning, Rotarians from throughout the country rallied together to raise the funds necessary to build and maintain this memorial. And of course, a special thanks to that small but vital Rot Rotary Club of Camp Pendleton for teaming and managing this project from its inception, up with the Rotary Clubs from throughout San Diego and Imperial County that were mentioned already here this morning. Bonzo, Carlsbad, Valley Center, Escondido, and Vista. Over 3,400 Rotarians strong who were the driving force behind this venture, donating their precious time, money, and effort to make this idea a reality. It is a magnificent reminder of the special relationship we have with our local community and the love and the support that we continue to receive from you. So on behalf of the 55,000 Marines who serve in the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force and on behalf of Marines worldwide, I want to thank all of you and all for, on behalf of all our, of our Marines for your efforts that we see manifested behind us here this morning. This memorial is another reflection of the honor a grateful nation places on those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice to defend it and preserve the freedom and liberty that we all share. It is not intended to provide closure to the families and friends of the men and women on this wall, nor should it. For the memory and legacy of the heroes on this wall will always remain alive in their hearts. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's appropriate this morning that you please join me in pausing for a moment of silence in honor of those from the United States and our partner nations who lost their lives in the defense of freedom since 9-11. One point six million service members have deployed to fight the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan since our nation was attacked on 9-11. All of the soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines have been volunteers. Citizens of our great nation, they left their families behind, 
knowing full well that serving their country could come at the expense of their lives. They deployed to places they had never been to, perhaps had never heard of, to defeat a determined enemy and to liberate and protect a people they had never met. It was just four months after the 9-11 attacks on our nation when the Marine Corps and the Marines from 1MEF suffered the first combat loss in the War on Terror. Captain Daniel McCollum of Richland, South Carolina and his crew of six Marines were killed while flying in their KC-130 aircraft over the cold, cloudy, and inhospitable mountains of southwestern Pakistan. The names of the crew from VMGR-352 are the first seven names to grace the memorial wall behind me. Those seven names have grown to over 1,146. They died in places previously unknown to most Americans, but now are a part of our historical lexicon. In Iraq, places like Al Anbar province, Ramadi, Fallujah, and Nasiriyah. In Afghanistan, places where Marines continue to fight today, Helmand province, Marja, Kajaki, and Sangin. These are just a handful of the many places that have been touched with the blood of our fallen heroes. To the Iraq and Afghanistan veterans here today, and to all of those whose name appear on this wall, you are all heroes, and we thank you for your service. You decided that when darkness threatened, you would carry the torch of liberty and spread the flame to any clime and place, and you will never be forgotten. Sadly, there is space on this wall to add new names. Our mission in Afghanistan is not complete yet, and Marines will continue to serve there and provide a crisis response force in the region for the foreseeable future. Nevertheless, this wall provides some comfort to know that any future fallen hero will have a place of honor on these, wall, on these walls alongside their brothers who have gone before them. So as I conclude this morning, ladies and gentlemen, again, I want to thank you all for coming here today and especially to all of those who helped make this memorial behind us this morning a reality. God bless each and every one of you, and may God continue to bless this great nation that we both love and serve. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise again as Commander Pease offers our closing benediction. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks this day for all who hear the call, step out of the safety of the crowd, and make the commitment to serve in the United States Naval Services for the sacrifices they made, for the hardships they endured, for the families they represent. Lord, we are especially grateful for the Marines and sailors whose names are etched upon this wall. We honor their commitment to duty, their service to our nation, and their ultimate sacrifice. Lord, bless their families and bless them this day and throughout all eternity. Give them peace. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our wall, Memorial Wall plaque dedication. On behalf of Lieutenant General Boldhauser and the Marines and Sailors of 1st Marine Expeditionary Force, thank you for your attendance.